I think I might have just ended that last one. Hey, no, you've just recorded it. You're recording now. Oh, you might have ended right, Well, this might be part two. I don't know if I ended the last recording or just stopped the pause. Yeah. But this is a good way to share emails without doxing people. So I'm going to read this and I can copy paste it into a document at a later stage. So after our unlisted brainstorming session with the German lady, mm -hmm. I said, hello, Diedrich. I'm trusting you with the following unlisted video of brainstorming around your daughter's case, including some important and perhaps impertinent questions for you. I need to establish, or we need to establish if Anka is innocent. I suspect she is. And if Wilfred and others, some of them, are also innocent. If that is the case, as I suspect, it is a conflict of interest for Anka to implicate Wilfred and the extra two ladies arrested, eight in total, minus one likely murdered, in her attempt to avoid a long prison sentence. It never works out well to cooperate with the devil. Please contact me. We can do Zoom calls and share not public, but with those who can help. So he's replied, <clears throat> it's a fair comment, it is long-winded. Listening to your very long lasting discussion, I became more and more angry. I still believe in your truthful intention somehow to help in our case, but all your assumptions, speculations and completely untrue statements should not be the basis of a serious conversation. Now, this is us saying things like, you know, was he MK Ultra? Is the child adopted? And so on and so forth. Is Anka part of the. I mean, they're just questions we have to ask. I know a lot more about the situation and its background, and it would take me to write a complete novel. That's not what I want to do. I answered not to your offer of a Zoom conversation. I am not familiar with those new techniques. Most of your discussion was rubbish. He's obviously triggered by what we've said. Sorry to be so harsh. As you at least partly assumed, I am an honorable man. I lost 15 kilos of weight since finding out about Anka's fate. 1972 to 1974, I was employed in the tripartite company of Urenco, U-R-E-N-C-O founded to pool the knowledge of the UK, Netherlands and Germany in uranium enrichment. This is huge. He's a doctor. So what's got to do with uranium enrichment? George Webb, Kirsten W, Jason Goodman, who knows? Nothing to do with people not being trustworthy. Both my daughter and grandson are also German. My daughter is a late mother, and that much more, that's much more the reason she loves her child. I can understand that. My last child was born at 40. You know, the first child at 43, that's unusual, but it's not impossible. Well, Hey? Just, it was just a confirmation we needed to know whether or not it was her child. Well, I did ask Florian, and Florian said no, she never showed much interest in fellas, and she came late to love and very late to motherhood, you know, whatever. So, yeah, yeah. So the father, the granddad, or Anka's father says, I attended her pregnancy several times. Unfortunately, we get no support in Germany. So he's obviously reached out to a few people in Germany and they're not interested. And that's a bit like um, Clarice Gutman. She can't get any American embassy support for what she's had happen to her in England, can she? And John Patterson went with her to the American embassy in England. Yeah, I remember, I saw that. Yeah. So it's almost like, and even Rupert Wilson Quaintance, when he got held with no passport in England for a year and then jailed for seven months, the American embassy didn't do much of anything. It's almost like if you get trapped in the UK, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. So he says, all lawyers contacted by me, both sides of the channel said the same. 
She is also English. She has dual citizenship and that's it, full stop. <gasps> the German government could not offer any support. So they're basically Anka's thrown overboard by the German government, even though she's German, her father's German, the grandson's German, but because she's got dual citizenship, presumably the child has also, the, the, the Germans don't want to know, the same as Clarice Goodman's American side, Rupert Quaintance, American side. If you're stuck in the UK, God help you, because don't expect your country to intervene. And then he says, all further information I could offer during a phone conversation, but not for further discussions like the recent one you had. Yeah, and a fair comment, I respect someone. We, I sent him a copy of us saying, we trust nobody. Is he MK Ultra? Is she part of the cult? What's going on? Who's telling the truth? And he's had the guts to come back angry. So I kind of that the questions that are going to be asked that, that should be the asked, uranium thing is weird. Put to bed, so that it can be put to bed. Yeah. Anyway, look, it would be much better you collected a complete picture. Afterwards, one could bring a consistent, reliable story to the public. You see, this is like let's get our story straight, and I kind of understand that in a way. But it's like, let's agree on a narrative and then take it to the public. And I don't like, I don't like that. I don't like that. I'd rather keep it real without compromising anybody. I don't want to compromise Wilfred Wong. I don't want to compromise Anka or her granddad. I mean, her father, the child's granddad. I don't want to compromise anybody that's decent in this situation. But at the same time, I don't believe in let's all get on the same page behind the scenes and then go public. That's like, that's like scripted. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, if this, the information's there, then let's have that information. We can start that information getting out there, but we haven't got any information, have we? We've got nothing to give out yet. Where was the previous records of what was being stated that was? Where's this court case that ever happened? You know, where's the yeah, time it takes yeah. on these things? And he says, um, dear Andrew, please understand my critics and may I ask you to call me because I couldn't find you in my WhatsApp list. I don't know how to add people to WhatsApp. I'll have to get one of my kids to do that. And by the way, who are Tina and Andy? Well, he's seen you on multiple interviews and he sent us, or Florian sent us a very thankful you guys have changed the narrative. You've got the truth out there. Thank you so much for what you've done. So I feel I'm not a full-time journalist anymore. I'd like to appeal to an honest journalist in the UK to pick up this story, but it's a bit like looking for an honest lawyer or barrister. It's like a needle in a haystack. Well, what we're being, what what are we being? Basically, what can we do? What, what our position of doing is, if somebody's got any facts out there that we can put out there, present us the facts. Yeah, if you're too scared to put them out there, which is fair enough, yeah. well, we will do it for you. But let's have the facts. Yes, talk about I the think, facts. but I think it's been very helpful because you've been contacted by people associated with the two ladies that were arrested. Yeah. You know, and it may be that this gentleman is angry. Because we've said, if she's done a deal that turned in two little old ladies that were trying to help, and she's turned in Wilfred Wong and said he, he suggested the rescue, when Florian's evidence indicates otherwise, that's not very honourable. So I think we've got a right to say that's not a very, it's an understandable line. Like you said to me, you know, if you're scared and the police are pressuring you and you're getting told... Made an offer. It's it's made an offer you can't refuse. You it's know it's I mean? an offer you can't refuse. So I can have a bit of compassion for that. <laughs> but I, I would rather that we keep being honest about what comes across our path mm -hmm. and, and let the chips fall where they may, let the truth come out. You know, and if there's a mainstream journalist, you know, UK Column are offered to work with um Anka and her family and provide a German translator but everybody that they've I don't mean to be rude but everybody that they've 
apparently supported as fallen into a black hole like Melanie Shaw still locked up in Rampton, you know, four years later. You know, so many people, Holly Gregg, you know, nothing, no justice. So many cases, even the little brief bit of coverage they gave the Hampstead case, that no justice, you know. So I don't know who to refer Dr. Seagert to. I haven't shown his email address. I have read out the emails and it does follow on from an un, you know, private brainstorming session that Andy and myself and a German person had. And we posed some hard questions like, what the hell is going on? Why would Anka plead guilty? Why would she, you know, why would she turn in two little old ladies that provided some support? And why would she say it was all Wilfred's idea? It's either police pressure and duress or something else. And I think the fact that he's had the guts to reply angrily, and say it's rubbish what you're saying about my daughter, I think that speaks in his favour. So it don't, it don't want anybody, anybody. He's 82, he doesn't know how to do Zoom. Now the point on this, let's, let's get to it, because this was a valid point and let's, let's stick, because I mean, what I've also right, been working with lately with, with the court cases themselves. Now remember, for, for to get, I mean, for a start-off, those, those people, yeah, they're being told what's been said rather than being seen what's been said. Now, if a court case was done correctly, then the proceed, the, 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 the information would have been laid before that court, and that court, yeah, would have generated a case number, a case man file or a family man file, yeah, and there would have also been, yeah, those proceedings would have been served to the, to the accused, i.e. those six or eight people now, the information that's been said against them would have been certain. They would have seen the affidavits that have been made or the statements made under caution by the police so that they can see who said it, yeah? And then they can, they've got the information rather than hearing from other people. So what I'm trying to say is these courts are not being operated generally. Yeah. Being, I should have said correctly, yeah? They're, they're, they're being generated counterfeitly because the due process is not being followed. And therefore, then no one's going to ever going to get justice with inside these courts unless we hold these courts to account to make sure that they operate correctly. So, like, let me just show you a, a screen of what simply must be asked to the magistrate court that they was put into first, yeah, so that you can see what it is that needs to be asked. And this information should be requested from the magistrate court that, that where, whether they was where they was taken before they was remanded. And it's quite simple, like. So to whoever, I mean, this is just one I've just done. So it's a constructive notice and request with the, with the address of the person and whoever's name it is, yeah? To whatever, whoever it is versus whoever it is, yeah? So, you know, the, the, uh, the accuser and the accused, yeah? Versus the accused. So I, a man or a woman, whatever our name are, whatever, whoever it is that's requesting the information, make this request in compliance with a party's statutory rights under the CPR 5.4, two in brackets, or its equivalent, and your common law duty to be open and transparent to supply the documents to the requiring party. This is not a DSNR, this is not a DSAR, this is not data protection on this. This is the information that if it was a genuine court, the court would have served those proceedings on the, the defendant, on the, on the accused, so that they can see what actually done. So number one, I formally request a copy of the section one, two, and three of the computerized court records at CCR or the caseman printout in accordance with the Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Justice Directorate for the above case number where it states. So whatever their case, not case number is, which I've just put on this, yeah, but they'll put their case number. Because I'm telling you now, in, in my experience, that case number will not be a case number. It will be a CP, CPS number, yeah? Or, you know, this is, this is not a, a real genuine court case number. If it was a real court case number and they've got everything and they're all happy, that information that was laid in front of the court would have been binding. They would have said it was all present, present and correct. Then they would have created a case number and a computer, a computer printer yeah, for, to record everything that goes on within that case. Then then proceedings would have been served to each and individual one that was accused. Right then, so 
So I formally request a copy of the section one, two, and three of the computerized court records, a CPR caseman printout in accordance with the Ministry of Justice Di Directorate for the above case number where it states, upon request, this document is provided by the court's administration, not the judicial side where the CPS is, not with a rubber stamp on it, with a proper court seal on it, with a proper wet ink signature on it. So with the court's administration to the parties in the proceedings, claimants and defendants who ask to obtain the printout of the computerized court records, the CCR, this document is crucial to check and cross analyze the validity of the proceedings. All the data held and recorded by the court is displayed on the court's record, the CCR, as divided in three sections. One, okay, so, no, sorry, carry on. Yeah, a file view request to inspect the paper court file, urgent. Yeah. Two, a copy of the application and claim form issued by the court. Three, a copy of the particulars of claim issued by the court to justify the legality and the lawfulness of the statement of the claim. Grounds, A, I have, I have never been, no, i sorry, I have never filed nor been served with any proceedings issued by the court on which the case number appears. Because the thing is that the court won't have sent them. They've been dragged into the court. They've not seen any of these things and they're just talking. And this is what I mean about, you see, we've got a pit, we've got an omelet, yeah? But we haven't seen the eggs being broken. If there's no eggs being broken, there can't be an omelet. And this is the point. They've brought us into a court case that looks like a court case. It's in a building that looks like a court building. You've got people, you've got people in there, these actors that look like a judge, that look like lawyers, yeah? And they're all operating and, act and acting like that, but um, there is no genuine due process because without the due process, yeah, meaning if due process was followed, then there would have been that information would have been laid before the court in first, then, there would have been a case number and a case file, a case management file generated, yeah, and then then proceedings would have been served by. Yeah, the I get court. it. I get it. So it's, yeah, I get it. It's yeah. a technicality, but it's a valid one. I remember attending a court case in, um, I think it was Hampstead and Highgate, with um, Neelu and Lee Cant and different people for Sabine McNeil, and uh, uh, Neelu was there, and we were in the public gallery. And Neelu asked for the judge's name and the judge slapped her down and said, don't you dare address me from the public gallery. And then um, Sabine got bailed. She'd been held in Holborn for a long weekend, deliberately for a long weekend outside in Holborn police station. And um, when we went to talk to the court clerks and things, they all turned their badges back to front to hide their identity. You have to. This is this is my point. Yeah. And the other thing is, the other thing is, people were getting, um, uh, what's it of the court, um, contempt of court. Yeah. Now well, I you asked one Somebody simple had thing. To run. How Somebody... can you get? How can yeah. you get contempt of court? Then first of all, yeah, he who makes the claim, yeah, you're saying it's a court. To provide the evidence, yeah. yeah to provide yeah. that material evidence to substantiate that this is a genuine court case. Yes, so yeah. Provide these, this, provide the court case number. I don't want a, a CPS number because every one yeah. I've been to, to so far, they've come up and it was a CPS number. It was not a court case number in the courts. None of the courts have been able to provide this because they're not genuine courts. You know, we've even had court managers stating, yeah, that the on, on the um, on the council tax that the court buildings are hired and there's somebody else going in there rubber stamping them. There was never a court case. I know I've seen some yeah. really good stuff on that, as, including by Katie Boyle, who hammered me last night, and then we kind of resolved a bit today. But there was a guy in the public gallery with us. There were about seven of us in the public gallery, and at the end of it. Somebody said something like, he just said, not even that loud, something like, it's a circus or clowns, you know, clowns they are or something. He made some derogatory remark, remark about the court proceedings. And the judge said, take that man down, take that man down, arrest that man. She went ballistic. Mm -hmm. and it was hilarious. He, yeah. he got smuggled out and managed to escape with security guards from Hampstead and Highgate Court, chasing him down the street, and he managed to escape into the ether. 
it was literally a farce. It was like a Monty Python film. Yeah. Well, because this is the thing, is, you know, the king's got no clothes on. Exactly, the emperor's got it's no clothes on. It's been exposed now. Yeah. What, what I'm trying to say is this, is, this is so big, people can't see it. It is, it's my... What I'm, what I'm stating here life. is so big. Now, now, listen, we're not talking about whether anybody's done anything wrong or whether they have done something wrong. We're not interested in whether there's a guilty party or not a guilty party. Oh, we are. We're yeah. talking simply about, yeah, there is a court procedure mm. and there's due process. Not being observed. And if there is a genuine court case to be held, why wouldn't they yeah. do it through the correct procedures, which they would Absolutely. have to do through the administrative side? So this, let me just finish it off. Yeah. Like, All right. The documents and information are required from the court's administration, non-judicial, because there's two sides of a court. It's the administrative side and it's the yeah, judicial, judicial side. Yeah, the judicial yeah. side should not, they, they really need, need, need permission to come into the administrative side. They can't just come into it. So these are the ones that keep the genuine records. And if it's a genuine court case, then it's gone through the administrative side and there's a court number been created. This is the, the important bit. If it hasn't been done, due process not has, been, has not been followed and you have to ask yourself why. Why if, so like I say, I'm not here to say whether or not someone's guilty or not guilty. I'm just here to work out that, listen, whether they was guilty or not, why would they make a counterfeit court case up? Why did they make yeah. a counterfeit court case? Why didn't they do it properly? And why if, wasn't the information laid properly? Why wasn't the process done? Due process followed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and if you point. take it to the next level, Baron David Ward, who's currently on a short sabbatical because of health reasons, but he says you don't even go in the court unless you say under duress and let the judge know immediately, I am not here of my own free will. I do not consent. I was brought here necessity. under duress. It's for necessity. Yeah. The, the, the word is necessity, meaning right. I haven't got an option. Right. So I'm only yeah. here out of necessity. necessity and in, all yeah. this can be conducted on the paper and it can be proved that you're a corporation, the police are a corporation, the government's a corporation, everything's just... Everything's just... Yeah, I mean, the, the second just, thing is there, who gave them the authority over yourself? Absolutely. The only, the only man can give authority of mine is me. I'm the only person that can give that authority, and that, all, that authority, meaning their consent, is the wetting signature. And again, and I, it was a simple case of he who makes the claim that they have authority over me, therefore now have a duty bring the to provide the material evidence yeah, absolutely. my wetting signature that I have a contract with them. Yeah, and I go back to the thing I said to Baron David Ward, which is if you imagine pioneers in America making a little town out of nowhere, just, you know, cultivating and creating a community, they would say, let's, let's designate a sheriff, you know, and they would authorise that sheriff. And if that sheriff misbehaved, they would remove him. It would be as simple as that. It's like... You're here to keep law and order in our little new community in good faith, and we've elected you to do that. Now, if you turn out to be corrupt or start taking bribes or getting compromised, clearly you're going to be removed. So this has just gone so big. It's like it's like a monster that we've created. Well, in their, in their world, because it's illusion, they can make anything up they want. And they've Absolutely. got that many layers of, of, of tricks and traps. There's that many layers of deception. And put a wig on and, and a black through. gown and look they, scary. Yeah, so this is why this, is why this, this process is so beautiful, because it holds them to account because you've got the documented proof. Yeah. And the point is, as you know, yeah, they're, 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 won't they, if there is no case number, they're not going to give it yet. Yeah. If they're not going to give you something that they've got to give you, you've got to ask yourself, why won't they give you yeah, this? Yeah, I know, I know. Because it was never there in the first place. So they're, it's by acquiescence they've given your agreement that, yes, this is a counterfeit case because we can't prove to you that it's a genuine case because if it was a genuine case, there would be a case number and there would be a case number. Yeah, and if so until... Case, yeah, so, if, yeah, we know that's what I'm trying to say. So yeah. you can't prove that they've done wrong, but you can you you can prove that they can't prove that they've you done wrong. Prove it that the engine through which they're trying to make allegations is faulty, correct, which yeah. is what Baron David Ward says as well. It's like you, the whole arena that you're calling the judicial system is is flawed, and so anything you say is flawed. It's it, and it's like you said, the content of the case is irrelevant. But to bring it back down to ground. 
if Uncle, I appreciate Dr. Seeger getting back to me. I appreciate his angry response to us asking questions like, why were you in the UK for two and a half years in 1970? Uh, what kind of a doctor are you? Um, you know, and I've also had some primary preliminary research done to verify the date of birth of the child and that the child is in fact Anka's, which, which I think I believe, mm -hmm. but, uh, and also to verify the marriage of Les and Anka Hill. Um, and I think I just need to say to Dr. Sigurd, who's 82, that if you've got, your daughter has landed you in a high profile uh, international uh, case, everything is on the internet so please just get used to this thing of i'll, I'll say things will I'll be say verified this. things will be verified i'll say this to the to the to the doctor because if i'm i'm putting myself in his shoes now yeah right? this is my daughter yeah so i'm in yeah. his shoes now, yeah and i believe i'm not just saying this to this to the doctor i'm also saying this to all the other victims that are in there or the other all the other people that are in that prison right now yeah to get through a message to to them or to the family members that can do this for them to ask this simple question because they are now answering they've, they've given statements and given answers to something that they've never seen there has never been they've never been served any proceedings by the court yeah. so they don't know they've been told some such and such said something they haven't seen it firsthand. They haven't seen the information. They haven't seen the affidavit from the witness. They haven't seen the affid or the, the statement made under made under under caution at the police station that somebody said such and such. And right now, because they can say anything they want, because it's a counterfeit court case, and I'm saying it's I'm saying it, I'm guessing it's going to be because I'm pretty certain it's going to be. Yeah, and that's exactly how they do it. So the, the, the people are answering to questions when realistically all they need to do is simply state, I have never been served with any proceedings by the court. Yeah. So let me see what it is. I want to see, feel, touch what it is that I have to answer for. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything coming from them lawyers' mouths because them lawyers are liars. Yeah, because once they put you in the hands of a lawyer, because again, I keep trying to bring it back to personal, to Anka, to Wilfred Wong, to the other people, to myself, to Ricky Dearman. And, and when I went for a voluntary interview with the Gardaí after they took all my stuff, I said, you took away the warrant. I need a copy of that. And they said, oh, you'll only get a copy if you have a solicitor. Uh, and if and when it goes to trial. And then they read me out Ricky Dearman's statement against me, alleging harassment, but I should have had a copy of that, you know? Yeah. And if they say to me, well, you won't get any paperwork till you've got a solicitor. I don't want a solicitor. Yeah. I don't want the reason a solicitor. Why, you know, and you know for the reasons why. Yeah, because they're going right. to be on the same side and they all work together. Not. They are yeah. all working together, yes. So, so I people just... who think they've got a lawyer that works for them, you're very incorrect because a lawyer has got three opportunities. The first one is for the judge, the second is for the people, and the third one is for the incompetent ward of the state, yeah, that has just hired them. So well, when you hire a lawyer, you've signed it yourself because you've no longer got a voice and you've now got somebody else. But not just that, you become a, a com an incompetent ward of the state. They can do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You declare yourself incompetent by hiring somebody to speak in your stead. I've learned so much from Baron David Ward and I wish him well. And Dr. Siegert, ich möchte sagen, entschuldigen Sie, we're just, we're trying to help. But if you think we're being ruthless with the kind of questions we're asking you and the kind of evidence we're asking you for, believe you me, a court case would be much more ruthless. So this is, this is the nature, your daughter has gotten involved with a man and uh, had a child and this nightmare has happened. And even though you're 82 and you've lost 15 pounds in stress and you've wept tears as a grandfather and a father, you, I hope you have good support around you because this is going to be a bumpy journey. But our recommendation is you do not take the easy route of just cooperate for a lesser plea, make a plea deal, throw everybody on the bus, agree to things they tell you to, to get less time in jail. That is not going to help, I, in my opinion. If Arthur decides that she wants to take the path of least resistance, 
then we can't really help. And that's the truth, isn't it? The point is, Anchor will have been told all sorts. Okay. Yeah, I know. Anchor yeah. will have been told they said, he said, she said. Yeah, they, yeah. And they will have, they will have got true. into her yeah. mind. But you need to get it into Anchor's mind. Stick to the documents. Absolutely. Stick to the documents. Absolutely. Unless, you see, unless you've seen it with your very own eyes that he said, she said, yeah. you're being played by these idiots that are just and throwing you And this is what makes you question not just the barristers and the solicitors. This is what makes you question the police. Because why no. would the police, if they, if they find a child in the company of her mother and her auntie and a, a renowned international alleged... SRA specialist and some professionals, why would the police say to the mother, you're going to get eight to 11 years in jail unless you give us Wilfred Wong and give us everybody else that was involved and tell us where the money is and tell us who did this and who did that? Whose side are they on? Whose side are the police on? Don't they want the truth? They just want to frighten if it's the case that the mother really gave birth in, in you know, 2012, and she really was married to Les Hill, and she really has been in front of secret family courts twice, and they've ruled against her and taken the child from her and given the father increased access to the child and ignored all the allegations of sexual abuse and trafficking. If that's the truth, why would the police torment that mother instead of saying to her, oh my goodness, you shouldn't even be in jail, let us help. What, what, what is that? Is that Freemasonry? That's, 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 is that Freemasonry? Is that the yeah, brotherhood at yeah. work? Yeah, so I mean, that's exactly why they would. But the point is here, is if those things have happened, let's have that information so yeah. that we can show that it's happened. She and said then you're gonna then say to yourself, well, why can police do it? Because Nobody else is going to know about it. No one's talking well, about Well, we know. Too to bad. Know. People know. And the other thing, just to briefly, because I've got to go and get my boys, well, my boy, but the other thing, just to say, because we have kept some things off the record. We have had a brainstorming session off the record. We both declined to go on to Ramola D or different public forums at the moment because it's very delicate. But uh, Anka, according to the German contacts, two of whom we're in touch with now, one her father and the other a childhood friend, Anka managed to get a bundle of evidence documents out of the UK to Germany along with her dog before the uh, botched rescue. So her father is in, in possession of a copy of this bundle. There's another copy somewhere safely. She has got her evidence out there in case things went wrong. So I think it's a case of if she is indeed the party, then she needs to find her courage and fight this properly and not on the police terms. Well, that was my that was my point from the very yeah, beginning. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I think that's like, where was this? They must have put it. They must have put something in there to cover their back in case this went wrong, because you knew full well when to get caught. Well, she got a bundle of documents to Germany with her dog before the planned rescue went ahead. And, but there was e even indications that it, was, it should have occurred to Wilfred as a seasoned veteran campaigner. And so according to Jeanette Archer, Archer is supposed to have done many of these rescues before. It should have occurred to him that something was very wrong because Anka was arrested for two days the week before. You know, and there well, were leaks all over the place. Is that a fact, though? Is that a fact? Well, that's according to Florian. Florian says she was betrayed. I shared this email. Florian said Anka's been betrayed many times on this journey. She was arrested for two days a week before the rescue. She was arrested and held for questioning and then released after two days. What was she arrested for, though? I don't know, I'd have to go back into the email, but there were leaks all over this. So I don't, I don't believe that Wilfred or somebody didn't have a clue that this was a, this was a, this was messed up. You know, even for Anka to have been arrested for two days the week before, I suppose sometimes you think, well, I've started, so I have to finish. Do you know what I mean? It's now or never. Anyway.
prayers for the not if it was for that same thing right you know you wouldn't but there were red flags i know hindsight is 2020 but there were red flags all over the place yeah. so anyway uh, like that, let's fingers crossed it comes out because like i say i mean as it is all we're doing is talking about all we're doing is talking cooking. but, but I like i say to the to the to those that what i've just given out there that's that's major yeah those yeah. questions were asked remember listen guys don't don't be walking if there's a counterfeit case hold them to account if you're yeah. going to just answer to questions he said she said but then you haven't seen because you haven't been served any proceedings by the court yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't know what's been said and you're yeah. answering they, do, they can say they can make anything up and yeah. they are and i was and told and that's, how, and that's how they manipulate people oh yeah. your friends just confessed everything do you want to tell us so you get a smaller sentence yeah. it's it's nasty it's not i don't like it prove it exactly I recommend people also go to Baron David Ward's group on Facebook, Security by Way of a Lean, L-I-E-N. He's on sabbatical, but there are a few people that have got up to speed in there. Go and read the paperwork. Dr. Seagut, if you have time. You know, anybody close to Anka Hill, anybody uh, close to Wilfred Wong, you know, listen to what Andy's saying with Anthony Badalou's research and listen to Baron David Ward because this is all just um, play acting. This is all corporations. I saw a video where a man got a 200 pound fine for being on a protest, an anti-mask protest. And when the fine came, it was a limited liability company set up by police. And they turned over 1.4 million last year in fines. A limited liability. And guess what? And guess what? They're controlled by capital. Um, Guess what else? And all Andrew Rhodes. That was Andrew Rhodes was the chief director on two of that of that company. I and Andrew Rhodes is the same copper that Carol Carol um, Carol Woods was exposed. This is all connected. People have to. We have to get our. We shouldn't have to be doing this stuff, but I tell you, this is the time to do it. So I just reiterate: if anybody, even if it's hearsay, because when it's when we can't prove something. We just do private brainstorming sessions to see what comes up. Anybody with information, please contact Andy, divinebar at hotmail.com. That's it. D E V I N E B A R at hotmail.com or Angela Power Disney at gmail.com. Or you can find us on Facebook or Twitter. But do if you, want to, if you want a copy of that of that PDF of that that letter that I was just showing to send, where you can just copy. Yeah, it. I'll put that in the description box, and yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna share this, and I do publicly apologise. Let me just share a screen to finish with this, because we've said all along, because this is an unfolding case, we will apologise when we get things wrong. So I do publicly apologise to Dr. Barbara Hill, uh, shared by um, it doesn't matter who shared it. This is not Les Hill. So I will remove that video and uh, please accept our apologies. All right, anything else, Andy? No, that's good. We're good to All go. Right. All right, good job. Until next time. Let's All right, take care. Some information so we can actually talk about something. That yeah, we... and I feel bad for the father, but at the same time, welcome to the internet. Everything is out there. We, and if there's any dirt, it will Please. come out. Truth fears no inspection. Truth fears no inspection. Amen. Let's we're, not to, we're not calling anybody. We're just putting no. questions. We know. We just we don't know. We're Amen. just putting it out there to bring out the questions. So Amen. you know, bravo, you spoke up. Let's uh, let's hopefully you'll bring some other stuff out there. Okay. Get put out there. Okay. All right. God All bless. Right. Take care now. God bless.